Good morning everyone, welcome to our Monday Morning Worship. Uh, this week we're going to be thinking about our school value of confidence. A couple of weeks ago we thought about um, changes and the fact that all of you are going to be starting in new classes in September. Also the fact that our Year 6 children will be um, leaving us and moving on to, to their new schools. Um, we'll be thinking more about that in particular um, in an extra special worship time next Friday, um, the last day of term, when we'll be sharing in our end of term service and Year 6 Leavers Assembly combined. Um, I know quite a few of you have already been doing things uh, to prepare for this, so thank you for that. Um, but today I just want you to think about the changes that are coming um, for you and to think about how you can face them with confidence. Sometimes when we're faced with changes or with a challenge, um, it can be easy just to step back and say, nah, can't do that. Or someone else would do a better job. Or no, I really don't want to. The person in our story, um, whose name was Moses, very famous Old Testament Bible character, uh, faced some pretty major challenges. His people, the Israelites, had been slaves to the Egyptians for a long, long time. Uh, they'd been through some terrible, terrible times. The Egyptians were a very powerful people um, and they made the Israelites work hard and treated them badly. The Israelites, on the other hand, dreamed of being free and of having their own land to live in. Now, Moses had left Egypt many years before um, and he'd become a shepherd and he was actually out looking after his sheep at the time that we pick up our story. You'll see that Moses didn't have a lot of confidence himself. Um, so here's the story of Moses and the burning bush. The sun was burning hot. Moses' skin was burned dark brown. And suddenly he saw it. A bright red burning bush. Its branches crackled orange and red and Moses couldn't help but watch for the bush did not burn up. Take off your shoes came a voice from the bush. This is a very special place. Who are you? asked Moses. Uh, and why are you talking to me? I'm just a poor shepherd. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel, the voice replied. And you are more than a shepherd. You are Moses, the man I have chosen to lead my people out of Egypt. Oh, I can't do that, Moses trembled. I left Egypt years ago and, and I'm an old man now. You can do it. You must do it, God answered, for my people are slaves in Egypt and have prayed to be set free. I have heard their prayers and you are the man I have chosen. But what if I go and they don't believe that you sent me? Moses asked. Take the walking stick that's in your hand, God said, and throw it on the ground. Moses did as God told him, and the stick turned into a wriggling snake. Now pick it up, God commanded. Moses wrapped a shaking hand around the snake's scaly middle, and it turned back into a stick. Show them that, God laughed, then they'll believe you. <sighs> but I'm so shy, Moses continued. I'm no good at talking to people. Don't worry about that, God assured him. Your brother Aaron loves to talk. You can take him with you. Now, go. My people need your help. So Moses went. He put on his shoes. He picked up his walking stick and he went off to set God's people free. Moses and Aaron went to visit the king of Egypt. God wants you to set his people free, they announced. 
but the king just laughed. Don't be silly, he said. They do what I tell them. They work for nothing. I will never set them free. Then I must warn you, said Moses. God will make some very bad things happen until you change your mind. It started almost at once. The rivers of Egypt filled with blood. The houses of Egypt swarmed with frogs. The dust of Egypt turned into gnats. But the king would not let God's people go. The people in Egypt were covered with flies. The animals in Egypt grew sick and died. And ugly sores broke out on everyone. But still, the king would not let God's people go. Hail pelted the land and broke down the crops. Locusts gobbled up what was left. Then darkness, like night, fell for three whole days. And still, the king would not give in. Finally, God sent an angel to kill the king's eldest son and the eldest sons of the rest of the Egyptians. Then, at last, the king said, Go, go and never come back. God's people cheered. God's people packed. God's people waved goodbye. But just as they reached the sea and were puzzling out how to get across, the king changed his mind. He leapt into his chariot and he led his army out after them. Soon the sea stretched out before God's people and the Egyptian army rushed behind them like a wave. What could they do? Raise your special walking stick, God whispered to Moses. And as Moses did so, the sea split in two before them, leaving a path right down the middle. The people of Israel hurried along that path to the other side, the Egyptian army close behind. Just as the last of God's people had safely crossed, Moses lowered his stick. The waters rushed back and the army was washed away. God's people were free at last. What an exciting story. Um, you might well know it if, you, if you've watched the animated film Prince of Egypt. Really good film. I'd recommend it for you if you've not seen it. The story of Moses um, now, back at the beginning of the story today, when God called Moses from the burning bush that didn't burn up, um, we can see Moses didn't think that he was good enough. He was short of confidence. Um, he said to God, I can't do it. And what if this happens? And what if that happens? And, and I'm a rubbish speaker. No one will listen to me. He looked for every excuse possible not to do the mission that God had given him. But God didn't back down. And in the end, with the help of his brother Aaron, Moses was able to talk to the Egyptian king. And eventually, after much perseverance, he succeeded in setting the Israelites free. And God looked after him and helped him through all of it. Sometimes we can be a little bit like Moses, can't we? Um, I know I can. Sometimes we can feel that we're just not good enough for the challenges that we face. We can look for reasons not to do things instead of facing challenges with confidence and with perseverance. Um, some of you who are thinking about going to new classes or new schools might be worrying um, going to new school that you might not make any friends or you won't know how things are done in your new class. You won't know what to do with a different teacher. And maybe the teacher won't like you. All of those things can be worries, can't they? Um, now, there's nothing wrong with having worries. It's just a natural thing um, when we don't know quite what's coming up. The problem is, if we let those worries get the better of us, we need to remember that there are good people, people around us who can support us. A bit like Moses with his brother Aaron. Um, maybe our friends, our families, teachers. Some of you might like to talk to God about your worries. And if we face things positively, if we believe in ourselves and accept help from those around us, then we're so much more likely to succeed and to achieve great things, just like Moses did. 
Now our prayer this morning is from our school prayer book as usual. Um, this time it's about confidence. And this one was written by Jessica in year two. Shall we pray? Lord, let us all have confidence so that if we want to do something, but it is scary, we can just go for it and see how we get on. If we don't get on that well the first time, help us to keep on trying until we get things right. Amen. Thank you, Jessica, for that very important prayer. Um, now it's time to look back at the results of last week's challenge. Uh, before we do, though, just to let you know that there's not one of our usual challenges this week, um, as instead of our usual worship times next week, we'll be joining together on the final day of term for our special end of term service and leavers assembly. Um, but the challenge I will set you is not one to send in, but it's one to take forwards. Um, instead, it's to be brave, to face the future with confidence, to believe in yourselves because each one of you is very special um, and you've all got so much to offer. Um, always be bold, be the best that you can be. Now, last week's challenge was all about noticing God's amazing creation. It was the wonderful world challenge. And I've received some fantastic photos from you that show all sorts of different aspects of God's creation. Uh, you've done a great job of spotting the beauty and the wonder of our world, of noticing the things around you. Let's finish our worship time then um, by sitting back and enjoying these fantastic photos of our wonderful world. I see trees that are green Red roses too I watch them bloom For me and you And I think to myself What a I love 